Good morning, folks. We'll start updating yesterday's X-Class solar flare. It appears that the CME will mostly miss Earth, if not completely miss it. As for the previous two CMEs on their way, we're not seeing much of anything thus far in the solar wind. Maybe some of these recent density spikes are part of an impact with the KP holding at 3 just below instability. It'd be a weak impact. We're also seeing the electrons hitting the floor, but that could be due to a small high-energy proton surge we're seeing as well. After that X-flare, the sun took a bit of a breather. We're now slowly climbing back up to M range. The latest one indeed came from our departing sunspot groups. When we look at the star, we see most sunspot groups are departing. Not much magnetic mixing left in our big dogs, save the southern positive arc in the trailing region. Incoming groups, the lead at the bottom might be mixing a bit with negative below the lead positive umbra, with the trailers needing another day for analysis. Southern negative coronal hole at the bottom, positive coronal hole up north. The coronal magnetic fields are currently doing their best to block the positive influence from the equatorial line of the sun. We'll see how this progresses the next few days. I'll also note the formation of multiple solar tornadoes over the northeastern limb. This is absolutely beautiful. Let's do some rapid fire news. Earth took a gamma ray burst last night from near the constellation Virgo. University of Alabama Huntsville with two big stories out. The first is about terrestrial gamma flashes. Remember those are Earth's version of a solar flare in the Earth spot hypothesis. There are more than a thousand of these each day. They also published a terrific piece on Mars weather. Looks like it has stronger interactions than Earth in some respects. The day after a Belgian nuclear reactor came back online from a shutdown, a drone was spotted in the black zone above the plant. Somewhat disconcerting. Suspiciousobservers.org and its upgrade process is coming along. Anyone caring to give feedback on mobile functionality improvements is appreciated. Members, don't miss yesterday's fly-on-the-wall upload. It was 70 great minutes of discussion. The Mobile Observatory heads to Dallas-Fort Worth area today. We'll be at the Colleyville Whole Foods from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'd love to see you out there. Channel veterans, you know what an arc storm is. If you are new here, type it in exactly like that on Google and the top two links should be these. It appears that we have a low-level atmospheric river event at the west coast of the U.S. right now. Not the major one we know is coming one day, but still a tremendous amount of moisture funneled in. This will continue to cause flash flooding and snowstorms out west, and as it moves east over the next few days, it will concentrate into a powerful low, make a terrible winter storm for the holiday day and may break some more cold records on the western side of the system as it moves along. We have a miniature version of that flow out in the North Atlantic as well. This one drives onto land to meet one flow out of the Arctic and another flow coming up from the south. I'd love some weather shares in the comments from anyone affected here. Down under, we've got a convergence south of Australia, a low visible in the southwest that hooks up across the north actually, and a convergence just astride New Zealand. You can see the three cloud lines resulting from that interaction. Got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.10 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.10 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.